We're looking at the second shifting theorem now, and the second shifting theorem actually deals with the unit step function that we saw a couple of lectures ago. And the uh, second shifting theorem says this. It says if you're doing Laplace transform of some function times a step function, then all that ends up doing is when we multiply by the step function in the t world, that ends up multiplying by an exponential in the s world, and then you just do the Laplace transform of f of t. Now the tricky part here is the function has to have the same shift that the step function does. So this is generally where we're gonna have to work out what's happening. So let's try one of these this way. Most of the time we use it the other way, or one way to think about it is if we're multiplying by an exponential in the s world, what that ends up doing, it's a shift in the t world and a multiplication of our step function. But let's try doing just a Laplace transform of something. Let's do uh, t u of t minus three. So here our function is just t, but to be able to use the second shifting theorem, we need this same shift. We need this uh, t minus three piece. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna cheat. Everywhere there's a t, we're gonna go t minus three plus three, right? Because that's really just zero. So I didn't change anything. I'm just changing how it looks. Well, I'm gonna keep the t minus three piece with what I need. So this is gonna be t minus three u of t minus three plus three u of t minus three. Okay, so if we spread this apart, uh, t minus three u of t minus three plus, and of course constants can come out front, Laplace transform u of t minus three. Now just as a quick reminder, what are we gonna do with this piece? Well, we saw in the past, Laplace transform of u of t minus a is just e, uh, e to the negative a s over s. Or another way to think about it, using our second shifting theorem, that is just the uh, function one there, f of t is one, so this is e to the negative as times the Laplace transform of one, which of course is one over s. So you see you get the same thing, uh, think about this in terms of our shifting theorem. All right, so what happens to this piece? Well, this fits this exactly, so we're gonna get e to the negative three s times the Laplace transform of t plus, and this is gonna be three, we already know what this is according to our rule. This is gonna be e to the negative three s over s. So all we gotta do now is just put in our Laplace transform of t. Again, uh, an older one that we know, we know the Laplace transform of t to the n is n factorial over s to the n plus one. So here our n is one. So uh, let's actually swing it up right here so we got a little bit more room. So this is e to the negative three s. Well, plus transform of t is going to be one factorial all over uh, s squared and this piece. So plus three e to the negative three s times one over s. Okay, so using our second shifting theorem, anytime you're going to use it to go from the t world to the s world, you got to make sure every function of t has the same shift as your unit step function. Once you compensate for that shift, just do the Laplace transform of each piece. Now, the way that we see this uh, quite often is actually going in the other direction. Let's do a straightforward one there. Leave that over there. So, if we did it this way, the Laplace transform of e to the negative a s, some function of s. So, what's going to happen here? Oh, oh, that's inverse Laplace. All right. Or my inverse sign. Okay, so since we're multiplying by an exponential in the s world, what's going to end up happening, we know that we're going to take the inverse Laplace transform of our f of s, but then we're going to shift all our t's to t minus a and multiply by t minus a. So this exponential gives us a shift and a unit step function with that same shift in it. So if we were to, let's go over here, let's get ourselves some more room. If I said find the inverse Laplace transform of e to the negative 2s over s squared plus uh, 16. 
Okay, so when you're looking at this, the first thing you say is, hey, look, I'm multiplying by an exponential in the uh, S world. So I know what that's gonna do. That exponential is going to shift this in the T world, and it's gonna be T minus two, remember the negatives in the formula. And then we're gonna multiply by the unit step function, T minus two. So now what we gotta do is the inverse Laplace transform of this piece. Hold on a second. All right, well, this is gonna be our inverse Laplace transform of sine, but if this is the, the, the constant squared, we need the uh, square root of that on the top, so we're gonna cheat that a little bit. I know on the top for this, I'm gonna need a four, so I'm gonna put a one-fourth out front. All right, so it gives me S squared plus 16. We're gonna take T, transform it to T minus two, U of T minus two. All right, so this was our inverse Laplace transform of sine, so this is one-fourth sine of four T. Now we still need to take that T and map T minus two, multiply U of T minus two. So again, just for some room, I'm gonna bring it up right here. So we get one-fourth the sine of four times t minus two, u of t minus two. Okay, so there you go. There's the inverse Laplace transform when we have an exponential. When you see an exponential, you know you're, oh, let me look. I don't know why I didn't write it. I said it, t to t minus two. All right, we're gonna shift our t's and multiply it by a step function. Just do the inverse Laplace transform like you normally would. Replace all the t's with your shift and multiply it by your unit step function. So it, it, this is really helpful if you see an exponential in the S world, you know it's going to be a shift and multiplying by the step.